Good morning and welcome to the service with the difference. It is the 16th of July 2023. We are in the season of discipleship and we have been looking over the last um, period at how Jesus has been teaching his disciples how to be disciples, how to be disciples of Jesus um, and how to be apostles of Jesus, how to proclaim the message and and live the kingdom in the same way that Jesus has, has been doing. Over the last while, we have looked at Disciple 101, where Jesus introduces his disciples to, to what it means to be a disciple. We are now busy with Disciple 102, where Jesus is taking them deeper into what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Um, two weeks ago, we looked at how Jesus taught them that the source of their strength needs to be God, the Word of God. Um, and last week, we looked at how the source of our understanding needs to be the word of God. We need to have our hearts opened to God to allow the word of God to come in and, and give us strength for the work that lies ahead and, and to give us understanding of the kingdom of God. And today we're looking at how the word of God needs to permeate our lives so that our presence can reflect God in, in this world. Today we are reading from Psalm 86. We are reading from verse 11 to verse 17, where the psalmist is just saying, to God, please teach me, teach me to, to follow you, teach me to trust in you, because I know that is the only way I'm going to be saved from, from this time of trouble. When I'm obedient to you, everything seems to, to work out, says the psalmist. And then we're reading from Isaiah chapter 44. We're going to read from verse 6 to verse 8, where God is saying to the people of Israel through Isaiah, I am the only God. There is no other God besides me. If there is another God who created all of this, who put this all together, let them stand up and, and challenge me them, themselves. And an alternative reading to the Isaiah 44 reading is um, a reading that comes from the wisdom of Solomon from, from chapter 12, verse 13 and verse 16 to verse 19. Wisdom of Solomon is an apocryphal book, one of the, the, the extra biblical books that we find in, in many of the Bibles. Um, and it speaks of, of pretty much the same thing. There is only one God and, and that God cares for, for his people. God's power is known in, in his mercy. Um, and then we're going to be reading today from Matthew chapter 13. We're going to read from verse 24 to verse 30. It follows on from last week's reading of, of the four soils. Um, we're reading from verse 24 to verse 30, and then again from verse 36 to verse 43. It's the parable of the seeds of wheat that are sown, and then the seeds of the weeds that are sown amongst the, the wheat. And so it's the weeds and the wheat. And then the second part of the reading, verse 36 to verse 43, is Jesus' explanation of that. And so again, I'm going to ask that you put this on pause as you read through those readings. And as we read through them, we give God thanks for them. And we pray that he will bless them to us as we reflect on them in, in this moment. As Jesus tells this parable of the wheat and the weeds today, he, it's, it's a continuation of the conversation he started last week with the four soils. Um, and he is still speaking to the Galilean farming community. And he is speaking still in, in light of the religious leaders from, from chapter 12 who have judged him as, as evil because he isn't like them. He doesn't do things the way they would expect him to do it. And so this parable is one that distinguishes between the righteous and the self-righteous. And, and obviously, again, it's in response to the religious leaders who believed that they could see into the heart of Jesus um, and they could they could do that enough to presume what his intentions were and, and they could judge him then as, as evil. And part of what Jesus is teaching his disciples as he teaches them how to be disciples is is he is teaching them how they need to be present in, in this world. He, he is teaching them where the source of their presence needs to come from because their presence needs to reflect the God who is at work in them. The way in which we as believers live out our faith in this world is the way in which this world will, will know God's presence with us and, and obviously with, with them as well. We are the reflection of the God who has touched our lives. God is present to the world by the way in which we reveal to the world how God has, has touched our lives. If our spirits is that which is within us that, that you can't see, uh, us, our, our hearts and our minds, then, then our souls would be our spirits and everything else that our life touches. You know, everything we do, everything we say is an expression of what is going on in our souls. It's an expression of what is going on in our hearts and, and in our minds, as well as an expression of what is going on in, in our relationships with, with other people and, and our relationship with the world, with, with world events. You know, everything that, that we affect changing, everything that affects changing us is, is a part of our soul. And that is revealed 
in our presence. That, that is revealed in the way in which we leave people feeling simply by being present to them. Our presence is, is the window of, of our soul. And so Jesus is telling his disciples that they need to make sure that their presence reflects the God who is at work in their souls. He, when, when, he, when he told them to go and, and proclaim the gospel, Matthew chapter 10, he said, let your peace remain with them. If somebody accepts the message, if somebody receives the message, let your peace remain with them. I mean, in, in other words, just let, let God permeate the space that you are in simply by being present. Let, let the peace of God be present to the space you're in just because you have the peace of God within you. And so, and so we're asking the question as believers, as disciples of Christ, how, how do we do that? And, and Jesus tells the parable of the wheat and the weeds. And as he tells this parable, he, he is teaching his disciples how to do that by telling them to, to remember who does what in the kingdom of God. Because in, in this parable, in the first act, the seed is, is sown. This is God acting. This is, this is God's work. The, the seed is sown. God scatters the seed. And again, Jesus is speaking to a Galilean farming community, and, and they would know that scattering the seed is an imprecise science. It's, it's not planted in, in rows. And we discovered that in the parable of the soils, where the seed is scattered recklessly so that, so that all the soils can receive the seed. And, and God plants good seed, and the evil one comes in the story and plants bad seed. We're both the soil and the seed in, in this parable. You know, we grow, but we also nurture the seed that is sown and we determine if it is going to grow and how well it's going to grow. God plants in us the seed of salvation that comes from our hope of adoption. And that's confirmed by the Holy Spirit. We're, we're in relationship with God and the Holy Spirit confirms it. But the evil one wants to take take that away from us by, by sowing seeds of, of no hope of adoption in us. And, and these seeds tell us that we, we are not worthy of being called the children of God. Or, or they tell us that we are, we're perfect as we are and we, and we don't need to let God do something better in us and, and through us. And, and where God sows recklessly, um, Satan sows aggressively. He, he is intentionally trying to pollute the farmer's land. And he is constantly waiting for an opportunity. Um, and when you're sleeping, when you're not alert, that's when Satan is going to sow these seeds. And the seed that God sows and the seed that Satan sows are, are, are very similar seeds. The one is called faith. God's seeds are called faith. Satan's seeds are called dart. Um, and, the, and they look the same. It's very hard to tell the difference except by the fruit that will come from the seeds when they, when they are fully grown. And, and in, in terms of this parable and why this parable would make sense for, for this community is because sowing seeds of weeds amongst the wheat was was a part of a military campaign because planting the weeds with the wheat was was common practice of ancient warfare was was common practice of of family feuds because when you destroy the agricultural base you would destroy the military base if there's no food there's there's no army and the kind of weed that they would sow with the wheat and in greek it's, it's called donal or, or te it, it looks just like the wheat except that when it is fully grown it produces no grain and if it does produce grain, it's a very little bit of grain. And, and, and that little bit of grain is very, very dangerous. Because if that grain is crushed with a wheat and it's eaten, you know, it causes dizziness. It causes intoxication. It, it causes paralysis in some cases. And so the message is very clear about, about, about the weeds that are growing up amongst the wheat. If, if the promise of the weed is not empty, then it is definitely poisonous. And this is true of every temptation that we will, will ever face because the devil will use justifiable and plausible reasons to confuse us. And he is not passive. So we need to check what we hear. Don't be passive in, in receiving the word. Be discerning when you hear the word of God. Make sure that it's consistent with the Bible. Seek, seek the wisdom of the elders who, who surround you. Um, engage with the material. Jesus again says to his disciples, if you remember in, in chapter 9, be I'm sending you out as, as my apostles, and I need you to be shrewd as snakes and innocent as doves. Be wise, be discerning as, as you engage with the word of God, but never deal with the world as the world deals with you. Con continue to be a reflection of the God who has sent you. Continue to be innocent as the God who sends you is, is innocent. And so in the first act, the seed is grown. God is doing God's work. In the second act, the harvest is grown. This is, this is now where we do what we need to do. This is our act. 
And so here the wheat will grow as well as the effort that is put into it. You know, in order to be a good, healthy, nourishing, providing um, bundle of wheat, we, we need to be resolute in our spiritual discipline. In other words, we need to stay in, in love with God. And this is a part of our, our Wesleyan rule of life. You know, with regards to our relationship with others, we need to not do harm, the harm that we have the power to do, and we need to, to do as much good as we can for, for those around us. Um, and then with regards to our relationship with God, we need to do everything we can to stay in, in love with God. We need, to, we need to pray on our own. We need to pray with, with others. We need to read scripture on our own. We need to read scripture with others. We, we need to continue to, to meet together in fellowship and hold each other accountable. We need to um, celebrate Holy Communion. We need to live lives of, of self-control. We, we need to make sure that there is nothing but God controlling our lives and and that's that's what fasting is we need to we need to make sure that it is only god who has control over our lives and so that's how we stay in love with god and when we stay in love with god we provide a good and a healthy and 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 a nourishing reflection of god just by being present to to the world so as jesus tells this parable along with all other parables it's, it's not a complete picture of of god's kingdom all of the parables are used to to explain an aspect of the world or an aspect of the kingdom of God. In this parable, God is the one who sows the seed, but God also uses us to sow the seed. We we, we got that from, from last week. Through us, God can bless the world. Through us, God can move in the world, especially when we're intentionally joining God in the work that God is, is, is doing. We too are able to sow good seeds in, in other people's lives. By, by what we do, by what we say, we, we sow good seeds. We sow the seeds of God in their lives. But, but the inverse is also true. You know, we are able to cause much damage by the things that we say or, or by the things that we do. By our very presence, we sow life or we sow death. By our very presence, we sow joy or, or we sow, sow misery. And, and in the same way with the soils, we're not only one kind of soil, but we have all the types of soil um, in all the areas in, in our lives. So, so here we are not all wheat or all weeds. We, we will know by the fruits which areas are, are which. We will know by the fruits where, where God is in control. And we will know by the fruits where our sinful nature is in control. And, and we just need to make sure which one we want to be. You know, are we are we convinced that there is no one who is equal to God? Are we convinced that there is no one who can compare to God? Are we convinced that God is our rock, that he is our only source of stability, that he is our only source of security, that he is our only source of safety? If we're not convinced, we're going to follow whoever we believe will be most beneficial for us at any given time, or we're going to follow whatever we believe will be most beneficial for us at, at any given time. And so in the story, the seed is sown, God is working. Um, the harvest is grown. That's that's where we are acting, and then the harvest. The third part of that story is the harvest is is harvested, and that's where God acts again. And this is where our presence is made known in this world. This is where our presence reflect the presence of God. In Jesus's explanation of of this parable, he is he is very clear that it is God who will separate the wheat from the weeds. It's not us. We're not called to judge whether others are wheat or wheat. We're just called to, to live as wheat and allow God to do what God needs to do. We don't have to take on ourselves the overbearing responsibility of relieving God of his work. Just, just do the work of inviting people to come home. You know, we might be certain that we can tell the difference between the wheat and the weeds, but, but I have no doubt that without fail, we will be proven wrong. We will be proven mistaken in our assessment of who is wheat and who is weeds. For most of us, we consider that people who are not like us must automatically be the weeds, just as the religious leaders believe that Jesus must be evil because he is not like them and he doesn't do things in the way that they expect him to, to do things. There's a story of a woman who had appointed herself as the holder of, of the church's morals. And so if somebody did something wrong, she would discuss it with everybody and tell everybody what you did wrong. And so, so people wanted to correct her, but they were too afraid of her because then she's going to air their, their dirty laundry. And one day she spoke to a man in the congregation um, about the fact that she had seen his car outside of, of a pub one night. And, and we all know what it means when your car is outside the pub um, at night. And so... So in response to that, he says nothing. He just walked away. And, and that night he went and he parked his car 
in front of her house and he left it there because we all know what it means when your car is parked in front of somebody's house all night. And so we think we can judge the hearts of people, but we're not qualified to distinguish because we don't know the hearts of people. We don't know the intentions of people. The only thing we can control is, is our tongue. The only thing we can control is our hearts. God, who was there before creation, who, who was there during creation, who will be there at recreation and at judgment, he, he is the only one who knows the heart of all people. And even then, God is graceful because his power is, is revealed most in his, in his mercy. And, it, and it's through God's actions that he has taught us how to be kind to others. You know, the right thing to do in any given moment is, is to be kind. The right thing to do in any given moment is to offer good hope to people by living in the mercy that we have received from God. We only take on the responsibility of judge when we have failed to acknowledge that we have sinned, when we have failed to let our sin go, or when we have failed to, to let go of our insecurities. You know, we show no mercy only when we are not aware of how much mercy we need ourselves. The righteous are kind because they have been shown kindness and they have received that kindness because they know how much they need that kindness. But the self-righteous, they, they're harsh. You know, the, the kind sow, sow seeds of life and they sow seeds of joy. But the self-righteous sow, sow seeds of death and sow seeds of, of misery. As believers, as disciples of Christ, as priests of God's kingdom, we should leave the weeding to God and the angels. Um, as Jesus says, God and the angels will do the weeding. And, and we just need to get on with the mission that, that Christ has, has given us. He, he has told us to proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God is here. And he has told us to live that good news out. If you've accepted the invitation to come home, then live your life and speak your words as one who dwells in the sacredness of God's presence. Our presence reflects the beauty of God, and so often it is a poor reflection of God because we fail to let God do what God needs to do. And we, and we even set ourselves up as God's advisors. You know, let God do the leading, and, and we as disciples, as priests of God's kingdom, let us just do the following. Let God do the leading, and we do the following. We, we didn't invent the message, but we only share the message that God has shared with us. We show the kindness that God has shown to us. We share the grace that God has given to us. We, we show the mercy that God has had for us. Let your presence be one that reflects God's presence. Leave your peace with people simply by being present to them and allowing the presence of God to work through you. Pray with me. Lord God, please give us the strength to allow you to sort the weeds from the wheat in, in our own lives and, and give us the strength to commit the rest of creation to your wisdom, to your care. Help us, Lord, to be present to you. Help us to be intentional about our time with you. Help us to stay in love with you and, and so to reflect your presence well in, in this world. Help us to make you known simply by, by showing up. Give us the courage to to leave the judgment to you and, and allow ourselves the grace to simply speak your peace into the turmoil of this world by being present with the presence that comes from you. Hear us, Lord, as we pray this in your precious, precious name. Amen.